Welcome to the Bellhop's Digital Tabletop, and a return to Rogue Book, discussing the changes that have been made to the game now that it's released to the public. A big thanks again to Natcom and Ab Abracam, I think is how it's pronounced, for providing us with the Steam key to the public release version of Rogue Book, and as well as access to the pre-release beta uh, a little while back. Now, Rogue Book, for those of you who don't recognize the name, is a digital deck building game from the team behind Feria and Richard Garfield, uh, the man behind Magic the Gathering, being his biggest card game fame, but also uh, Key Forge and a bunch of non-card games. Now, we originally took a look at Rogue Book back in February, and at that time, we were looking at a closed beta version of the game. Now that the public release version of the game is live, I gotta say it's changed a lot. And I think most of it for the better, but not completely. So today, we're going to sit down and take a look at a number of those changes and share our thoughts on whether we found them to be improvements or perhaps steps in the wrong direction. So there's been a, uh, any number of changes, but one of the big changes, and this is one I actually got involved on their Discord to complain about uh, and help drive more people, because I wasn't the only one complaining, but map movement. So the, uh, mm -hmm. as, you, as you move around, you click on hexes on the screen, on the screen to move from place to place. But yes. in order to look around the map and see where things are or where you might want to move or where you've left something uh, previously, originally the only way to do that was with the arrow keys. So you had to either cross your hand over and reach and, you know, both hands over on that side to, to use mouse and uh, or whatever. And they didn't use WASD for movement. Uh, and so a significant number of people spoke up <laughs> And while it didn't happen on the initial release, uh, one of the first patches finally gave us the uh, WASD movement of the map, which is so much more comfortable and just ease of use. Be honest, I don't get this one at all. <laughs> I, I easily just take my hand off the mouse to my arrow keys and move them, or just click around the map and walk back over to the left and then over to the right. This, this one didn't bug me at all, but people seem to dig it, so sure, go for it. Right. Uh, Next up, uh, you noticed this one actually more before I did, was the completely revised starting deck. Yes, the, the starting characters. Uh, well, for one, you don't even start with the same characters, so that was a little... Well, you start with the same two, right? Yeah. No, when you first start, you only have you. Yeah. Not a second character? No, no, you get the, the first tutorial. Two. It's the first two. Uh, no, it's the first two. It's the first two, yeah. yeah. So you only have the first two characters. And I started playing, and I was like, whoa, what's with all these companions? What's with this mounted card? Like, I... I as far as I can tell, these cards were in the game before, but they changed which ones were unlocked at the beginning of the game. Especially with the Defender character with this whole headbanging thing. Like, that was definitely not in the game before. Yeah. Head like, like, I don't even know where that came from. Yeah, I still don't even use the headbanging because it's, 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 I find there are better uses for that character. Yeah. Well, the only thing good about it is it, it's all combos, so they're free. So you can do some interesting stuff with combos. But yeah, they they basically, like here, we played a lot of rounds of the original Sean more than me and kind of got used to the different characters and how they play. And then they dumped on you a completely new game, it almost felt like. Like, even though I was playing the same characters, you had to relearn how to play them completely. And I honestly, I'm, the more I play the new version, I think I prefer these decks. They just seem more useful and I feel like I'm getting a little further. So we'll bit more about that in a little bit. <laughs> But the, that change was significant. It was just like, whoa, I don't even feel like I'm playing the same game. Yeah, I, I have to say, the for anyone who played the um, the demo, which is what we got, uh, which is what you basically got in advance, uh, mm -hmm. they made significant changes to so many aspects of gameplay. While it looks the same, it yes. feels like a different game. Uh, which is very a weird sort of uh, brain mix up because again it looks exactly the same. They haven't changed any of the graphics, but right. everything you're doing is a little bit different. Yes, like uh, over overall. So the the other thing too is there's a tutorial that didn't exist. The onboarding I will say is way better now. They they definitely walk you through how to play, how the things work, how to read your things. There is way more information on screen now during a fight. Like when you mouse over and turn, you're going to see how much damage you're going to take. You don't have to do the math in your head. You're going to see if your shields are enough. And it really walks you through from the start how to play, which is something that's often missing from betas. But it, I, I got to say the onboarding was way better in this version. Yeah, my, my only concern is 
uh, some of the information is almost too much. Uh, like for instance, that 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 mouse over at the end when you see what's going to happen uh, is really kind of a a giveaway. I mean, it's nice for your for general players, but if you get into more advanced plays, it can actually be wrong uh, because oh. <laughs> you can have random things happen, and you can have some. So it's not even always right if you get into mm. the really more complex stuff because they literally can't pre-calculate certain things right. until it happens. Um, and so there have been some complaints uh, in the Discord about that uh, simply because when you get to that more advanced level, it's not trustworthy anymore necessarily. And you're going to rely on that if you had that from the beginning. Yeah. Right, which I, which I can see being a problem. Yep. So the demo, you can only play two characters, and that was it. You were stuck with the, the two starting characters. They have thrown in more characters, uh, a grand total of four, I think. Yeah. And, and now I think, I mean, these were always going to be coming. I don't think this yeah. is anything we, new. We knew these were coming. Um, it's, it's odd. Um, the differences between them aren't as grand as I would like, I think, is the big problem. Um, two of them in particular seem somewhat overly defense-based. Um, right. and, and so yeah, the other two are way attack based. So yeah, it's, it's interesting because it's, I'm, I'm just, I, I feel like I would like more of a difference between all four of them, mm -hmm. uh, rather than two attackers, two defenders, and there's, your, you know, Bob's your uncle. Um, I, I would like a little more difference between them because right now it's not doing it for me. So either give me more, okay. more, more companions or take the ones you've got and do more differentiation with them. See, what I found is it's almost like it's set up that you have to put them in set pairs. Like, like you have to take an attacker and a defender. Right. You take both defenders, you're not going to win, and take both attackers, you're not going to win. That's that's the feel I was getting that, that I didn't enjoy. I'm like, the, why are you limiting my choices? The, the all attack definitely did not seem to be working for me. Now, maybe with more unlocks later in the game. Yeah, I haven't. I, to be honest, I haven't really played any uh, unlocks because there's a, a particular player combo I enjoy. Uh, which right. is an attack and defend. Um, so maybe with more unlock cards, it would be more possible. I'd have to, I'd have right. to explore, explore that more. But it does definitely lean you towards picking an attack and a defend. Yeah. All right, that's a, that's quite a bit of negative. So how about some nice stuff? My biggest complaint about Rogue Book before was that you, I never felt like I could do enough. I felt like you barely explored the map. They always put stuff off in the corners you couldn't reach. You could never get both of it. I always ended up having to leave a board feeling like I didn't finish it. They have fixed that as far as I'm concerned. You explore way more of the map. Now, you don't see it all. And I'm, I'm kind of, that doesn't bother me. I can't explore the whole dungeon floor. That's fine. I now feel I can see enough of it. And the other thing is they put a lot more at the map at the beginning to give you a goal. So you're not just randomly using ink out some way. You're heading towards something. And there's a sense of accomplishment when you manage to get to the thing you've been trying to get to. And I got to say, the exploration, the use of ink, and the new inks, and the new distribution of ink, I think is way better. Uh, and on top of that, there's now a number of um, things you can purchase and artifacts you can find, which will reveal special items on the map to give you yeah. even more direction as you're exploring. So you really can leave a map feeling for the most part satisfied. Every once in a while, they'll be like, oh, you know, I wish I could grab a little more gold or, you know, oh, I, I couldn't quite get to that one thing because I did, you know, the thief hit me on mm -hmm. one of my, la on my last ink. But oh, I hate that. <laughs> uh, I've actually been, I've actually been pretty lucky with the thief lately, but uh, every once in a while, you know, you just pure bad luck. Your mm -hmm. last ink is where the thief gets you and you can't chase him down. Yeah. But, you know, that's that's going to happen. And But for the most part, uh, they've given you both enough information and enough ability to explore, mm -hmm. which was definitely lacking in the original. Yeah, that, that is, to me, the biggest improvement. Now, added to that, there's a thing where the ink shows how much it reveals. Now, I think they might have fixed that in a previous patch before the release, but the original demo, I remember having my mouse over Spock going, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, okay. And then moving to a one, two, three, four, five, six. I love not having to do that now. Okay. I, th I think that I might have got fixed yeah, earlier. I didn't, but... I didn't have that experience. So at least in the, in the uh, as I didn't do the beta, I did the demo. Yeah, you did the pre-release. So yeah. I actually played in the beta. That was not, did not exist. So that hurt. <laughs> right. I am so glad they fixed that. Though it doesn't only happen a little while ago. There's some odd changes too, where a lot more stuff you pick up now. 
So in the old game, if you passed over a heart, you had to use it right then, both your heroes, hero 10. Now it's like a potion you can carry, but it takes up a spot where your ink would go. And that is a new balancing act that never existed in the old game. In the old game, I never ran out of inventory. Now, usually I have plenty of inventory and I'm not worried about running out, but it is an issue now. Like, like I have yeah. to use ink. And I realize I have to use my hearts now because I want to pick something up. Now I've been I've been generally playing without picking up hearts. So the last thing I do before I make a charge for the the end is I will go and pick up the hearts so that I don't leave them there on my right. way out of the map. But generally, I I have gotten to a point now where I don't really need hearts during the map, so I just leave them there. It's almost as if they need to come up with some sort of a mechanic. So that I can be penal, like the they could be eaten by some roaming monster or something, uh, right. because it seems almost unfair for me to be able to leave eight uh, healing potions randomly around the map, uh, revealed and available to grab whenever I need. Um, it it just seems a little unbalanced now to be able to do that as if they were part of my inventory. They're just out there because you can't use them during a match. You no. can only use them between matches. So if I need healing, I just Go pick up some of the ones I revealed. Uh, do they carry over to the next floor? They do, yeah. Just yeah. Yeah, ink, and, ink and hearts now both yeah, carry over. So that there. was a change. Well, as far as I can tell, it was a change. It's possible in the beta, I never had anything left. Well, no, yeah. I mean, no one would ever go to a, like, go a to new the next floor with anything a, left. Yeah. Ink. Where I have, I have gone to the next floor with ink because it's like the one where it reveals one space. And I'm like, it's I can't head to anything useful. So I save it for the next round. I've done it with a reveal three in a straight line. And I'm yeah. like, eh, that'll probably be more useful on the next map. And I and you can carry your hearts over. So the fact your inventory persists may be a change, but it's a, it may or may not be a change, but it's something that now happens that I appreciate. Yep, no, absolutely. Now, along with the change of all the cards you can get, they completely change the economy of the game. Like, like completely. Like the, the biggest change, I don't know. I don't even know what's the biggest change. If it was the, the redesigning of the cards and, the, and what heroes start with what. But the cost for everything is different. Absolutely everything. Like the cost of draft cards was 45, I think, in the original game. Now it's like 25. Yeah. Alchemy's half the price. Upgrades don't cost as much. There, there's you when you win a fight now, you get an option of taking an artifact or three set cards. Like there's just way more, way huge changes to the economy. Yeah, no, I it was interesting because in the original uh again demo that I played you often had to be careful because you'd, you'd find something and you couldn't afford it. So you need yes. to go run around and, and fight more in order to... Now, it's very rare that I haven't got, you know, all the money I could need and I'm going... Before I fight the big bad on that level, I'm going back to the store to make sure mm -hmm. I can buy all the cool stuff I want um, before I go up to the boss. And I've never... And the only time I run out... Um, there are some advanced levels, which uh, once you've beaten the game the first time, uh, give you challenges, basically. And one of them is it increases the price of everything by 60%. Oof. Um, so, uh, but again, you know, even that level, I, I it still didn't see, feel quite as bad as it had in the demo. Yeah, the, the demo, you were scrounging. You were, you were scrounging for resources constantly, yep. hearts and money, and that, that seems to be gone somewhere. Yep. And then... You mentioned the the one thing that's probably worth bringing up that um the with the economy changing. Sorry, I just like mental block <laughs> there and lost what I was gonna say. So one of the things is there's so many cards now, and you're getting so many cards unlocked, and because you have the money to buy all this, you have too many cards. This is a deck builder, and one of the features of many good deck building games is to be able to thin your deck. Yeah. And there are on very very rare occasions events that will let you take a card out but that's rare normally at best you're you're going to be able to change a card so it goes from yeah, the something alchemist. weaker into something else but yeah you're still stuck with this increasingly thick deck of cards i don't know this game i think garfield did this on purpose i think he wanted you to have fat decks because the entire leveling up system is based on how many cards you have in your deck. And the way you get unlocked new abilities is by having so many cards in your deck. I, I think this one's by design, and I think that's going to be the big thing. The, the, the exploration aspect, but also that for, for the fans of these kinds of deck builders, 
I think that's going to be either a selling point or something that will make people not want this game. I think it's something that sets Rogue Book aside. You are playing with fat decks. The, the goal of the game is to make your deck as thick as possible and still be effective. I think that's by design. And I, yeah, I just feel like for, and again, for experienced deck builders like myself, uh, while yes, you get a lot of benefits from having the bigger deck, it, there, it would be nice to be able to have that, that trade-off, mm -hmm. that, that question, is it worth me getting rid of this card that's been annoying me or should I keep it because it's, I'm going to lose a power if I get rid of a deck, right? If I'm going to drop right. down a level, uh, maybe. And and that that extra level of decision could make it a, a stronger game. But again, I'm not... <laughs> I hesitate yeah, see, to I, question I, I still think that I still think that's part of what makes Roadbook different from other right. digital deck builders. I, th I think that's going to be a personal preference thing. So the, the thing I was thinking about, we were talking about cost. There are a lot more things you can do to affect that. So with the with the scrolls, you can do things to affect the market prices. Yeah, which I found was a big change from the original game, which leads to the the entire upgrading system has completely changed. Like there's a, a completely different tree that basically looks nothing like the one in the demo, and they have all completely different things on them. And wow, does it take a lot of scrolls to do anything on it? Now, but I'm, you get a lot more. Yeah. So, and, and and again, once you've beaten that game first. Uh, and you get into this, the, the, the challenge mode, they call it New Run Plus. Um, these challenges give you ridiculous amounts of cards. Uh, I remember the first one I beat, uh, I, I I think I had 57... You mean, you mean scrolls. You scrolls, said cards. Sorry, sorry yeah. scrolls. Uh, I think I ended up with 57 scrolls or something like that because I beat, uh, you know, I had however many I got from the run, plus they gave me a bonus of like 30 or 40 scrolls just wow. for finishing that challenge yeah which is a big change like before this game was a, a run through a run fairly quick and maybe get one two or three scrolls and maybe even unlock something with those one two or three scrolls and then maybe do two runs and get a total of like 10 and finally unlock something big now you're spending 15 to unlock something simple like one more heart on the board it, it, it's a very different feel for the progression it seems less incremental it's more big leaps. Well, it's it's exponential. I mean, because it's, it's yeah. like five for the first heart, 15 for the second heart, and then probably 30 or something for the third heart. Yeah, it's, it's a very different feel because of that. Now, one of the things I thought was neat, actually, is the story is more integrated. When you get to the first boss fight on the first floor for the first time, until you've beaten it, you have a very set fight, which totally threw me off. I'm like, where's the randomness? I want to see different bosses. But it's a storyline reason. And if you beat that boss, spoiler, you unlock a new character to play, which I thought was a little cooler than the original game. Like, it, it gave me more of a feel that I was playing an adventure game and less of a roguelike, like, where it's completely random. So I did enjoy that touch. Unfortunately, uh, when you do beat the game, there are only three levels to the game. Yeah. Uh, and and it's not that hard to beat the game if you are a, you know, a skilled Slay the Spire or, or deck-building roguelike uh, type player, um, you're going to beat it pretty easily. It, it really isn't all that hard. It'll take a few runs to figure out the the balance and things. I, I admit I had the advantage of playing the demo a, a good number of times to get somewhat familiar to it, but you'll beat it. Uh, but the game isn't over, of course. <laughs> um, and I have to say, the way they did that was a little disappointing. Um, I'm, I'm glad the game wasn't over. You know, I, if, if it had ended, I would have been really upset about the amount of money I spent on this game. Uh, <laughs> and it turns out that there is vastly more gameplay than you than you might think. But at the same time, the way they did it story-wise wasn't as cool as unlocking the first character on the first boss. See, I, I'll admit, I haven't gotten that far yet. So I, I can't <laughs> talk to that at this point. Now, there is a fourth character that can be unlocked, which like basically is so obscure that you need to google it to figure out how to do it which seems kind of silly to me yeah you'll you'll trip across it essentially uh and all of a sudden if you are paying attention there will be a new character there but they don't tell you there's a new character if you do this thing in one of the levels and and, and it's 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 a two-step thing then all of a sudden a new character will be on the map Somewhere there has never been a character before, and somewhere you have probably never looked before. Yeah. Uh, and and it turns out I was actually missing the character, the new character. I knew there was one coming. I just hadn't noticed it for several games. So yeah, that's a little weird. 
Yeah. Now all of this combines to have completely changed the feel of the game, especially for game time and difficulty. Like that is another aspect where I almost feel like I'm playing a different game because of all these things together. It's a long game now and it's easy, which is part of what makes it long. No longer am I going in and possibly not even making it to the first end fight and then starting over with a couple more scrolls and making that inf incremental improvement and then doing that four times and then finally beating my first minor min or whatever major minion and then getting a couple more cards and unlocking and then finally getting to fir fight the first boss fight. My first play, I beat the first boss. Like my first play. Like I hadn't done any deck building. Just with the stuff I found in my first play, I beat the first boss. I'll admit I didn't get through the second boss. That took a few more plays, but again, it took a few more plays. It didn't take 50 more plays, and that's kind of what I expect from a rogue builder, rogue-style rogue game, and that seems to have been lost, but then replaced by a much more involved game, which is much more long-term and much more engaging because you're going to be playing longer, and it, I don't know if this is good or bad. For me, it's bad for a reason I'll get into in my final thoughts, but I, I, it's just such a change. Yeah, it's the the game now for me again i'm 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 further on than mo is at this point the game for me is generally all right let's get all the stuff i can on the way to the third board and see if i get to the third board end game and whether or not i beat it uh i will not always beat that third board end game but the odds of me dying before i get to third board are pretty slim i need to be taking a lot of risks and not not paying attention for the most part mm -hmm. um or for me to not get to the third board and with the new exploration and the and the x the the expanded map uh you get it is a hunk of time you're not yeah. playing this on your lunch break anymore that is at least said honestly my 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 main complaint so overall i like many uh, probably most of these changes. Um, Sean so far has sounded pretty negative, but I think he's still enjoying the game. Um, the thing I do dislike the most, though, is how much longer it takes to play. Like, like this used to be a filler. This was a game that I would play on a break. No, I don't have a standard day job with half-hour break, but in the middle of doing things, like, you know what, I'm going to take half-hour, 45-minute break, and I'm going to fire through a game roadbook. Sometimes two in that amount of time. I would get a little further in the game. I would hope to get a couple scrolls. Maybe I'd unlock something new. Maybe I'd get one of those artifacts that carry over and I'd probably discover something I hadn't seen before. Now I have a game I need to dedicate downtime to play it. Like I have to go, I'm going to sit down and play Rogue Book now. Or I'm going to sit just like I would be like, I'm going to go sit and watch Netflix or I'm going to sit and play XCOM. This is now a game where I need to dedicate time to it. Now, yes, I can play for half an hour and come back to it later. But I just, I don't want to do that. I, I want to play through a full game. I don't want to forget where I was or what I was doing with my deck building or remember what I'd done in past games. And I I don't know. Honestly, I haven't been and probably won't be playing Roadbook as often anymore due to this change. Like, I want to be able to jump in for a bit, do a quick run, earn a few things, start again on my next break and just keep pound, pounding through it. Like, to me, that's what a rogue game is. A rogue like supposed to be like. While I get this new version is more immersive, you earn a lot more stuff each run and you explore more areas. Just the time it takes to do that means I don't have the time to play the game as often. So, yeah, one of the things I'm finding is I, I really did enjoy the changes they made. I, I really was very positive on this game for the first while. Uh, but then once I, I got, I, I beat the game, you know, the initial uh, round of the game and I got into the, what they call new run plus, um, it feels very grindy to me. Um, and the, the, the random nature uh, that's built into the game means a lot of times I'm playing, grinding, hoping to get that one card combination I know I will take to the end and beat the last guy with. And I don't always get it. And even though I've spent an hour and a half, two hours grinding through. It almost sounds like for your play experience, you should be able to start on floor three with a set of stuff. Um, like, yeah. like just having to play through one and two over again that you know you're going to win and you're just going through the motions just to get to the actual challenge of three. 
Yeah, it, I, it almost I, sounds like they could use a fast forward or something. I, I almost wish there were multiple saves. Uh, yeah. right, you can you can quit and and say it'll save your position. But if there were multiples, I could go in, you know, play a level one and then go play a level two that I'd, you know, from from the one I'd beaten before and then go play a level three real, real quickly and have different experiences or, yeah. or you know, have, have different save points available to me. Because, uh, yeah, starting again, starting from scratch every, every time, time, knowing that I, I'm going to take an hour and a half to get to the end. I almost wonder if I shouldn't stop exploring and see see how fast I can run it. But oh, maybe, but again, then you're then you don't build your deck. So you're not building your deck, yeah, because you do. You start fresh. This is not like magic. You don't you don't start with a better deck. All that you actually unlock is the ability to find cards later, which is actually something else we hadn't mentioned yet. Is in a way, the more cards you unlock, the more you water down your chances of getting that card you need. Yep, which is another aspect of the game that changed. That I don't know if that's positive. Yeah, I think. I, yeah. Now, for me, I, I still think it's a solid game. Uh, it's honestly still my favorite from this genre of digital deck builders. Though, overall, I I want them to be fillers. I, I want to be able to throw it on my phone and play quick. This I don't have on my phone. I don't want to have to dedicate time to play. But I'm going to dedicate time to play this over the other ones I've tried. I'll still play this now and then. But, like, I used to play it all the time. Like, I would... I um, I already started some deals before I start working on the show notes for this week. Let's play a game of Rogue. I'll play through a round of Rogue. And I would sometimes play two or three in one day. That doesn't happen now. Now I'm at the point where I play like once a week, if that. Usually Sean will mention he's playing. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's something I can do when I finish what I'm working on. And I got to say, I'm kind of disappointed because I expected to play the heck out of this game. I expected it to be like a new obsession. And yes, it started like that for a bit, but it, it has worn off on me. Yeah, I'm finding I generally get depending on my days about one game in a day uh which is a significant drop from yeah. what i had been playing and what i expected to be playing once the full version became unlocked well i think that's about it unless you got any final thoughts or anything you want to share no that's all. all right so that's it for our review of the public release version of rogue book